Good afternoon and welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We've been coming to you live from the 85th Annual SDA Market Structure Conference. Joining me is, excuse me, is Lindsay Berg. She is the Head of Electronic Trading for Mizuho Americas and Europe. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us at STA. And it seems to be the key theme for 2018 is liquidity in the marketplace. And I know that's something that you focus on a lot over at Mizuho. That's right. Thanks, Jill, for having me. We um, One of the things we noticed when we would launch Met, Missoula Electronic Trading, is a lot of clients were saying, what's happening to my order? Where does it go? And why do I feel like I'm in this big herd when I go to trade electronically? So we started doing a lot of analysis around what actually happens when you put your order into the market. So we saw a few interesting themes emerge. One was that within... Um, a few ticks of the market, most players can tell exactly where that output came from and which is the um, sponsor behind that output, I mean, which firm created it. The second thing we noticed was that people really didn't have an idea of where they were going and how it was routing and if they even needed to go to as many venues as they were um, accessing. And then the third thing we saw was that people really had this need for customization because they wanted to get out of that herd mentality that we were finding. So when we started to do the analysis, we saw that about 15% of all liquidity in the market is inaccessible, which means that you can't actually access it. So it's on either being crossed on a desk from a market making perspective, it's retail, it's wholesale flow. So you're seeing a lot of liquidity print sometimes in names that you can't actually interact with. Take Twitter, for example. Right. So Twitter, 48% or 41%, I'm sorry, is actually inaccessible. So when you go to trade that, and if say you're going to be 10% of the market, you're actually probably a much higher percentage, knowing that almost 50% of it, you can't even get access. So we're finding that theme is starting to emerge, where clients are starting to see that what they're doing is starting to have an effect on the way they trade and interact in the market by sourcing out what's accessible and then what's not accessible. So what are the solutions that you're looking to come up with? Because it sounds like 50%, that, that's, that's a big number. It is Not being able number. to see like, what's happening within the market. That's right. So what we've done is we've created this liquidity analyzer. It sounds, um, it's, a, it's a great fancy way of saying basically, when you put your order in the market, what can I actually access as your algo provider? So where can I go in the dark venues, lit venues, gray venues, and then how do I actually change that routing in a customized way so that you're not sending your order to places where you're just going to leak information into the market. So we say, okay, if you're trading Twitter, to right. stick with our example that we did before, which, how am I going to change my routing table to do that? And up until recently, um, a lot of brokers didn't have the ability to really change their routing table and logic on a client-by-client -client basis. But now that we've built our, our methodology probably 25 years later after the rest of the market, we're able to do that. So we go in and say, oh, if you're trading a lot of um, you know, Twitter tech type names, then we're going to go ahead and create something specifically for that, making sure that when we do go out into the market trying to access that liquidity, we're going to keep in mind that 41% of it isn't even possible to get, so we're going to focus on the other 59% of it. Wait, and are you seeing um, results with these types of solutions? We are. So what we're seeing is that we're getting um, a good amount of basis points improvement, so we're keeping a lot of that alpha back in the trade, mm -hmm. and then we're reducing the amount of signaling that clients are having. And I think what's broader and the bigger theme around this is making sure that when you look at your counterparty, where that liquidity actually is. So if we take our same Twitter example, or let's say um, Tiva. So for example, like if you look at Rank Go and you see where which brokers are active in that name, you can actually tell which brokers are active in that name maybe from a dark pool perspective versus from a real natural liquidity perspective. And so that's the other element that we're adding into this. So when you look at where Mizuho falls on that table, we're number eight, which you're saying, well, that doesn't sound like a major player, but three of those eight, including us, are people that actually transact in that name that cover the name. Right. So then you start to take that into consideration, the routing table, and we've had a lot of success with that as well rethinking the way clients are actually interacting. So the inaccessible with the rank, like where they're actually active, and large, blocky, chunky liquidity, which is the other asset for clients, we're merging those things together and creating a customized strategy for you. All right. Well, thank you very much, Lizzie, for joining us at STA. Thank you. And thank you for joining me throughout the day. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.